Welcome back to Candy Adventures. I'm Chris. I'm Elizabeth. We live full time back here as nomads in our 2006 North Star truck camper. And today we're so excited to be on the Silver State. We have very little experience exploring around this state. And I say Silver State because sometimes I say Nevada and sometimes I say Nevada. And I get eviscerated on Instagram or whatever in social media platform this goes on. We are headed towards a hot spring. So we've never been to a real hot spring before. Uh, we have driven past the ones where it's like a pipe in the ground and it goes to a plastic tub or a metal tub. Yeah. But to get my first hot spring out of the way, I want to do it to the way that I think they exist in my brain, which is just hot water existing naturally uh, in, in the wild. And that's what we found here today in the Silver State. We've actually found not a hot spring pool, but an entire creek that is a hot spring. It's got endemic fish species. It has uh, its own little ecosystem and you mm -hmm. can swim in it and it's completely free. And so is this campground that we're staying is completely free. And the hard part about living in an RV is that you have to break stuff down in order to go places um, unless you have an alternate mode of transportation, which is where e-bikes like this one come in clutch. So Sonata sent us this bike uh, and we found an excuse to use it. And we have been trying to find an excuse to go to this hot springs <laughs> over here for about a year now. First thing we're gonna do is this Sonata e-bike does have a rear rack. And so what we're gonna do is take our trusty PetSmart basket and lash it here so that we can take uh, some snacks, we can take a towel, change of clothes, that kind of stuff. We've got a hefty beach towel, jackets, and our camera bag. And we're gonna strap it down in this PetSmart bag. And then Chris will be carrying a backpack full of goodies for when we get to the hot spring. And the reason we got jackets and all that stuff is because, as you can see on this mountain way back here, um, it is winter time. It is still March. And today, as we're in the hot spring, the hot spring is only like 80 degrees. It's not super hot, but it is supposed to get really windy here in a couple hours. And we'll probably be riding back in wet with a 20 mile an hour wind. So that's gonna be very cold. So we do have some extra jackets and stuff just to uh, stay not miserable. a little barrier here um, it's no bicycles beyond this point but that's really okay because the water is is literally like 50 yards right here <laughs> so does hand carry all of our stuff <laughs> really nice though is there's no people here now probably also because why my nose is running and it's a little chilly and there's snow on those mountains is not exactly the peak season for this particular hot spring um, but there's also no mosquitoes and no bugs so you win some you lose some oh it's so clear whoa This doesn't look real. Oh my God, look at the fish. We planned to have some nice hot miso soup while we take a swim in the hot spring, except we forgot water. So I'm gonna borrow just a little bit of this water. This has to be pretty healthy for you. Um, I assume everybody says hot springs are healing, even though I think <laughs> mostly that's nonsense. Maybe the temperature is, but you're not absorbing through your skin uh, anyway um i'm gonna go ahead and boil this so we can have some miso because i think when we get out of here we're going to be froze to death because we still have a, a bike ride to go back so yeah. i'm gonna get this boiling so it's uh doesn't make us sick oh. 
It's so warm. Wow. <laughs> it's cold. It's cold out here. <laughs> it's very cold. You know when your hands are cold from a long day of it being snowy and you put them under hot water inside and they're like numb? That's what this feels like. That is very nice. <laughs> well, we did forget those goggles. Um, I've wanted to come here for like a year. We've been looking this place up and I forgot a mask and snorkel to look at all these cool little fish. But I want to see if I can get some of these cool little fish on camera. There are four endemic species of fish Endemic meaning they only occur here in this small refuge and most likely only in this creek. And it's a stark contrast to our last video uh, with the pupfish where you couldn't even touch the water or uh, be near them. And here you can swim with them. All right, the water is absolutely delightful, but the air is very cold. I'm gonna hop out and get our miso to try to keep us uh, nice and warm. <laughs> From the inside. So I'm just gonna put some dollops of this into our container. <laughs> that's very nice. Oh, that is very nice. It's so neat just to be able to like, if you're still and don't stir up the bottom, it's so clear. You can see all the little minnows and fish. It's really cool. It looks, it's like being in salt water in some really clear bay somewhere, but it's fresh water. And there's no bull sharks here. <laughs> yeah, also nice. I don't care what salt water I'm in. I'm always like, there's a bull shark somewhere by. <laughs> or the clear fresh water in Florida where there's alligators. Yeah, there's no alligators. <laughs> there's no alligators or bull sharks in the in the Silver State here, and we've only been here for a little while. But we really like Nevada so far. It's very uh, everybody we've talked to from gas stations to stores has all been very friendly and polite. And there's lots of open space. All right, there's our miso soup. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. Oh, that is so much better. <laughs> that looks like a little piece of heaven right there. It's boiling hot. Yeah. So I'm going to hold it with two hands. Ooh, in the water. In the water. The water's <laughs> slightly cooler. That's very nice. I'm a little bit of a worry wart. Um, I'm not putting my head in the water. Um, I'm very scared of brain amoebas and flesh-eating bacteria and that kind of stuff. And I know hot springs um, especially are dangerous places to get that kind of stuff in your ears and your eyes and your mouth. I don't think this location specifically is, but I don't know that it's not. Usually there'll be a sign up or something. And just doing some online reading, I didn't find anything out about that. I think that's more stagnant when water sits stagnant. And this water is a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a creek. It's a flowing creek with a current, like it's, it doesn't just sit in a pool and kind of accumulate bacteria. So I don't think that's an issue here, but I also don't know enough to gamble it um, to get one of those brain eating bacterias out here with no health insurance in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> so. And I just sent it and jumped in earlier. So, you know, at least one of us will survive. That's true. <laughs> Mona will have someone. Do you feel very white girl? solo female white girl with your cup yeah in the hot spring <laughs> you've not shown your butt enough for this hot spring video that's true I don't have enough butt I don't even have swim trunks I'm wearing cargo shorts <laughs> <laughs> we, got, we got belt loops and 
This is the sexiest of all shorts are the cargos. It looks like I'm wearing a t-shirt too. It looks like I'm wearing a t-shirt with my cargs. <laughs> is it because of your tan? Lack, yeah, lack thereof. <laughs> We are clothed uh, because there's no one around. We slipped the we slipped the wet clothes off and put the dry clothes back on. So um, it's actually not that bad at all. And the sun's trying to come out just a little bit more before this wind starts to kick up, which is inevitable. But we got uh, a couple of miles back to the camper, and Mona's probably gonna go for a run because she hasn't had exercise in a couple days now, and she's chomping at the bit to get all that energy out but this was beautiful. We want to come back um, maybe like a month later from now would be like the perfect time where it's just a little bit warmer outside, but I'll take the no people any day versus it being a little bit warmer. I walk this empty street on the boulevard of broken dreams where the city sleeps and I'm the I walk alone. I walk alone. I walk alone. My shed. You can do it. There you go. The only one that walks beside me. My shed. this riding to exercise the dog we've created a monster because her endurance has only increased she's a high energy dog but we used to be able to poop her out after only like a mile and uh, now it's like a good two or three miles The temperature's dropping and we just spent all day in the water and had a really cold bike ride and then took Mona for another bike ride. So I think we're gonna have something pretty hearty. So I got a bag of rice here and we're gonna make something that I absolutely uh, love and that is taco rice. And it's exactly what you think it is. I started eating this when I lived in, uh, I spent some time in Okinawa and they used to have uh, uh, like a taco rice day at our little <laughs> dining facility and I used to really like it. And uh, I've stolen that idea and I love it because it's so easy. So we're just gonna make some uh, some rice in this pot here. So I'm gonna get my rice on the boil. And then we got our other ingredients we'll be prepping. We have a red bell pepper and we have some jalapeno peppers. We have some sour cream, which is funny. When I lived in Japan, sour cream was almost impossible to get even at their Mexican and uh, Brazilian restaurants. And then we have some lean ground beef. And then to top it all off the coup de gras, uh, my little Saudi Arabian nacho <laughs> cheese. <laughs> it does look exactly like that. It actually. looks very Saudi Arabian. Um, but uh, we don't like to let things go to waste. So the last video or two videos ago, we used this with the little discount in the dent. And we're still using it. Uh, and he's been well protected with his little hat. <laughs> kind of like our taco bar kind of deal. Build your own bowl. We have our base, which uh, just the white rice. So that goes on the bottom for your taco rice. And then I put black beans on top of that. And then we have a little bit of uh, shredded coleslaw cabbage when we did our uh, fish glizzies a few videos ago. And so we have some of that left over. So I'm gonna put a little, just a little cabbage on there for some crunch and then load it up with our ground beef. Um, I'm a huge fan of Chipotle flavoring. I love that smoky flavor of Chipotle. So we got a little can here. And then we also have our 
Juanita's <laughs> Juanita's authentic nacho cheese. And then we also have our little bowl of Daisy. Dollop. Boop. Whoa. We're eating at a table like real people. I honestly don't know the last time we've eaten at a table. Well, when we got Big Boy on the way up here, which people only saw on Instagram. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> but before that, it's it's very uh, sparse, the amount of times we eat at a table like civilized people. This is a badass backdrop. We're the only people in this campground right now, except the camp host. Just yep. nothing but birds and endemic species of fish in a hot spring that's it all right well i think uh that'll probably wrap up the video for today we have to uh, load everything up in this truck camper and get back on the road we have to be about nine or ten hours south in the next day or two um where we've been storing all of our things uh, is the ltva which is long-term vehicle area and it's where you can stay for like six or seven months out of the year for $180. And we're coming up on the end of the season. So we have to go back and scramble and figure out where we're going to go. Because if you're new to the channel, we also have like a boat and another car. And we, we drive around like a caravan. And so we got to figure out where we're going to go. With all of that stuff, it uh, makes it really hard to go into campgrounds because you don't quite fit. Because you are basically two RV setups almost with another car and a trailer. We don't, we rarely go to campgrounds. This yeah. one is free. We yeah. haven't been to a campground that we had to pay for in like six months, six or seven months. But the problem is, is with two vehicles, they'll charge you twice. Mm -hmm. And so we have a second car or a boat trailer that we pull and a lot of times they'll charge you for each one. And it gets crazy on how much it costs. So we're going to figure out what we're going to do. Maybe have to put something in storage or maybe run a storage facility. Because we don't have a home base. We don't have um, a house or a garage or... Uh, even like a parent's giant garage to store this stuff in so so we're gonna figure that out and drive about 10 hours south uh, maybe early tomorrow morning or this evening so mm -hmm. thanks for sticking with us it was a really fun video we've been wanting to film this for a long time and we were so happy that the, the, quits, the weather cleared up and that the wind wasn't too bad I'm happy it turned out the way that we hoped it would a lot of times when you make plans um, there always ends up being too many people or maybe there's trash or it's just not what you expected. And that was perfect. That was exactly what we expected, which was awesome. We'll see you guys next video.